Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that causes chronic, erosive joint damage along with extra articular manifestations, meaning other non-joint issues. In terms of causes, its pathogenesis is multifactorial, with genetic, environmental, and immunological factors. In fact, we think many pathways can actually lead to autoreactivity. As a summary though, the most important genetic risk factor is having the gene HLA-DR4, which encodes for a specific type of MHC class 2 protein. Pathophysiologically, it probably starts with a trigger at mucosal surfaces, such as cigarette smoke irritating the lungs. This can result in peptide residues getting converted from arginine into citrullinine. These modified proteins are then picked up by antigen-presenting cells, shown to overzealous lymphocytes, which ultimately perpetuate an immune response, including the production of anti-citrullinated protein antibodies. In the synovium of joints, these can stick together to form immune complexes, which induces local inflammation. Clinical features include articular and non-articular findings. It usually causes a symmetrical, polyarthritis with a gradual onset affecting the hands metacarpophalangeal joints and proximal interphalangeal joints. Classic exam findings include a swan neck deformity, Boudinez deformity, ulnar deviation, and rheumatic nodules. Common non-articular features include weight loss, depression, and fatigue, interstitial lung disease, coronary artery disease, and other forms of organ damage can also subsequent. Investigations can also aid diagnosis. In terms of blood tests, CRP and ESR are usually high. We have two main serological markers, rheumatoid factor and anti-citrullinated peptide antibodies, also known as anti-CCP. RF has historically been taught as the sensitive but non-specific test, while anti-CCP is often thought to be the specific one. My vibe from up to date is that RF actually just has a super variable sensitivity and positive predictive value and has less utility than I previously thought. Radiologic studies can be done to assess all joints affected, plus a minimum baseline x-ray of the hands and feet. Its hallmarks on x-ray include marginal erosions, which are well-defined areas of bone loss at the edges of joints. Now, there are four main tenets of RA management. One, lifestyle management. You should encourage regular exercise, a good diet, alcohol, and smoking cessation. Two, Induce clinical remission as early as possible. This is defined as symptom relief, normalization of inflammatory markers, and absence of joint swelling. This is often done with conventional DMARDs like methotrexate. Corticosteroids are often initially combined with this during induction. 3. Maintain clinical remission. When disease control has been achieved, the DMARD may continue at a reduced dose. Finally, monitoring for complications. Atlantoaxial involvement requires a special mention here because cervical spine instability from joint erosion is a known sequelae and can have catastrophic effects and needs to be dealt with urgently. Use my bespoke mnemonics to help remember some key points about RA. Anti-CCP is the more specific test because they both have Ps. When ESR is prolonged and late, methotrexate can't wait. A pain in the neck needs an urgent health check. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.